When they hear Sandstorm and Sir Big Spurs starts getting those calls sharpened, williams Bryce Stadium comes alive in support of their South Carolina Gamecocks. Little gets the blood boiling, quite like a rivalry game. Barbs, shots, trash talk, things that go on throughout the week will now all be settled on this field. As we'll see, the number 10 team in the country, the Texas A&M Aggies, taking on another team from the SEC, the South Carolina Gamecocks. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Time to get this game started. Texas A&M set to kick off to Chris in this game. He'll bring it out. It's McDowell. Not nearly as much as he had hoped when he brought it out in the end zone. He'll be stopped at the 15. So the South Carolina Gamecocks return team certainly didn't do the offense any favors there. There are always butterflies to start a game, but when you have a rivalry like this, the adrenaline is pumping on overdrive, guys. They aren't all the same. We say that, but we know differently. The blood is boiling, the temperature is hot. Jesse, you want this week more than most. Yeah, and we played in these games before. Everything just seems to be heightened, right? The game seems to be moving faster. The crowd noise feels louder. Your composure will be tested early in a game like this. And the Gamecocks want to crank the tempo. They'll leave it with him. Just gets it to the 28 pickup of one. And the running back didn't get much there. Nice job on the defense. You can tell they're focused in on this running back, on this run game, being physical, getting knockbacks, and limiting his carries. Third and short, they've got them backed up inside the 20, and the D can get the ball back here. To throw, it's Sellers. Fires complete on the crosser. He'll have the first down as he gets it to the 28-yard line before he stops. And it's tough on the defense there. Third down, your end zone coverage. Everybody's watching the quarterback. You're trying to make a break on the ball, but... He just got it out of his hands too quickly, and the throw was too accurate. Really nothing you can do there, and it's now a fresh set of downs. The Gamecocks have it with a first and ten. He wants to throw. Got it in the middle. It's Bennett. They make the stop, but not before they do their work up top and pick up a first down. If they're going to sit back in zone, I'm going to make sure I know exactly what they're doing find those holes, find those crossing patterns, and take advantage of that zone coverage. And the Gamecocks have this offense rolling. They'll put the tight end in motion. On the ground, it's Sanders. You'll take four yards on first down every time, second and six. Small game, I know, but again, the defense knows he's going to run the football. He's willing to run the football, not just drop back and pass, make him onto the run game. You've got to do a lot of this. After the productive first down play, it's second and six. Off play action. Throws to the wideout. Got his man! He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. And there was no question in that scenario. That's where the quarterback was going. He knew he had his receiver in a matchup that he liked, running a route where he would find himself opening. Nice job between those two. They'll snap this one from the 32. It's first down. Looking for a physical attack from the gun. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. They thought maybe they could get the defense flowing the wrong way on the counter, but they were not fooled. Get them flowing one way and then maybe hit that outside on the other side, right? But they didn't even let it get outside. They kept it right in the middle of the field, did a great job seeing it, going and getting it, being aggressive. you got to find a different way maybe to attack these guys, to use their speed against them. Looking for a man. It's Sellers. He got his man downfield. He gets it all the way down to the five-yard line. A terrific catch and run before he stops. And how about taking a 
big chunk out of this defense on the opening drive. And with the speed they have on the perimeter, Reese, no doubt. They want to come out here and test this secondary, test these DBs, and they know they've got the QB with the arm talent to get the ball there. That's a great start for this offense. He'll set up to throw. He's got it! And good coverage by the defense, just a short game. Sometimes it's easy for the receiver to get lost running a drag through all that traffic, Jesse. Yeah, and this is a receiver too, Reese, who's dangerous once he has the football in his hand. So I like the idea on offense of trying to get this guy the ball quickly to see what he can do once he has it. On second down, he's looking downfield. He snares it in the end zone! Touchdown, Gamecocks! You love as a head coach to watch your offense take the field and establish a rhythm and consistency the way they did there. Everything they dialed up was working to perfection. They go 10 plays on the opening drive and cap it off with a touchdown. Now they'll line up for what they hope is automatic. And the extra point is good, and it's 7-0. They go 83 yards on the drive. And they closed it going up top for the final few inches in the score. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. He'll start the return inside his five. I guess it could have been worse on that return. He goes out of bounds at the 15. So the Texas A&M Aggies offense has the ball for the first time. When a guy gets off the ball as quickly as he does, you know he's going to be breathing down your neck, and you've got to get rid of it, Jesse. This quarterback's good, but he better have a clock going off in his head. He knows he's not going to have a lot of time to get rid of the football. That's a big matchup in this game. Well, and that's what I love about this guy, because he affects the quarterback whether he gets to him or not. He knows he's there. He's that kind of good coming off the edge. Let's see how this QB performs under pressure. This crowd trying to make life miserable for this offense. To the air, it's Wegman. Fires to the middle. And the pass is incomplete, jarred loose by the hit. Last time these two got together, it was a tight one, Jesse. Seems like every time these two teams play, the game just feels faster, right? Because it is a rivalry game. There's just a greater sense of urgency when we see these teams match up. Yeah, the fans feel it. They know it. There's so much to it. They think about it all year long. We can talk about the next game on the schedule. They're always looking forward to this one. Makes a connection. They stay aggressive and push their way out to the 33, and it's first down. Third down, understanding exactly where the sticks are. You know, you, you got to stop certain routes so they don't get to certain depths. Quarterback completes and gets another first down. Got to be a little bit more mindful of where those sticks are. Texas A&M back to work with another first down. Use the play fake. Now to throw. Looking to the big tight end. Right on the money to the outside. He dragged the toe. And how about the ball placement? Only the receiver could get it. Well, another catch by the big fella. And, hey, this defense now in the second level, they've got to understand that they're going to see some play action. They can't keep biting on the fake. It's not easy to do. You've got to be aware of the tight end and his release. As soon as you see him get upfield, right now you know it's pass. So don't even worry about the fake. Get your eyes focused and find the big fella to go make a tackle or make a play on the ball. He's brought down, but there's a flag on the field. Let's see what the call is. The officials offer the deal, and the coach accepts it. They will take the penalty. Trying play action. Fires left. Ball in the air. Intercepted! That's why you love veterans in this defense. They stay locked in on their rules, and he made the pick. You know, the quarterbacks do not stare down receivers, especially when thrown over the middle of the field. You've got to look these safeties off. That was going to be a small window to throw into anyway, but staring at that wide receiver made the safety's job so much easier. First down for this offense.
He's going to pass. Blast it as he lets it go. Hit hard just as he released it on first down and just couldn't get it to the receiver. It's hard throwing in the pocket, man. You got bodies and 300-pound dudes falling all over the place. They're trying to hit you. That time, the pressure got to him, and it forced the incompletion. Wonder if they'll throw it again after the incompletion. Second and 10 from the 49. Dropping back, it's Sellers. Receiver looks it in. It's complete. They make the stop right there. Good pickup, but still short of the first down. That's a good job by the drag route there, understanding its zone coverage. So instead of continuing to run across the field, he settles down into an open spot, making it easy for his quarterback. The Gamecocks will hustle to the line. They'll try to pick up the first through the air. Catch in the middle, it's Bennett. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. Really nice job there by the quarterback, understanding that it's zone coverage on third down. You're going to have to find someone working into a soft spot, get the ball out of your hands quickly, make an accurate throw, and pick up the first. Well done. To the air on first down. Unloads to the wideout. He's got it. Run out of bounds just before he can get it into the end zone, and now they're set up first and goal. That's a beautiful pass and catch. I love the job the quarterback does manipulating the defense with his eyes. He froze that safety, and that allowed his receiver more room to work his route. And the Gamecocks line it up with a first and goal. Trying to barge their way in. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. And in that situation, the one-yard line, the defense brings so many guys. Palmer gets in the backfield, creates the negative play. Yeah, I think we're seeing the overall athleticism of this defense. They've got guys flying to the ball. Can the defense stop them again on second and goal? Tries again to get it in. Running toward the goal line. It's a fumble. The defense pounced on that. Now they're headed the other way. And that's hard to swallow. You're just, you're in scoring position. You got set up perfectly inside the five-yard line. Everything looking good. You can't fumble the football. You got to take care of it. Man, what a missed opportunity for this offense. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. After that last pick, David, they really need to take care of the ball this time. No doubt. And Palmer, I want to know what Spurrier said to you on the sideline after a pick. Do that again, and you'll be right here beside me for the rest of the game. <laughs> you got to go out. You got to call your plays. And I hope this coaching staff isn't going to be afraid to throw at this drop. They've got them pinned deep in their own end, and this crowd trying to help keep them there. Dropping back, it's Wegman. And a little too much adrenaline on that throw never gave his receiver a chance. Decibels rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. From the gun, wants to pass. Couldn't find a man and just had to throw it away to avoid a negative play. Every defense in the country talks about getting offenses in predictable third and long situations where I can bring on more speedsters and I know the pass is coming so I can have more success. The Aggies send out the punt team to kick it away. He just wanted to get it out of there from his end zone. He'll bring it back. It's McDowell. And the coverage team able to wrestle him down. And the South Carolina offense is back on the field. That fumble in plus territory just ruined that last drive, David. Yeah, and those are frustrating when you got the offense moving a little bit and you put that thing on the deck, Jesse. But move on, reload, forget about it. At the end of the day, it's just fundamental football, right? They practice it all week. Five points of pressure. Every ball carrier has to have it. They just got to do a better job moving forward. Offense gets set for second down. 
He's looking to throw. I don't think that's the way they drew it up. Incomplete. Well, on that last play, you'd like to see the quarterback be a little bit more accurate, give his guy a chance to make the play. That ball wasn't even close to his intended target's body. They've got the ball at midfield, but they're facing a third and long. Looking downfield, and he needs a bunch. That's caught. It's Sanders. And he's not going to make it. The defense denying him the first down. You got to love that on defense. One of the most critical statistics out there is how do you play on third down? How do you prevent the opponent from keeping drives alive? Right there, tackling the catch. You gave up the completion. What do you do? You set up fourth and long. You're going to get the ball back. Go get some water and sell it. Able to keep them from getting a return, and the ball goes out of bounds. They're going to mark it right around the 20. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Stopped at the 25 after a five-yard game. I know the passing game sells, and the passing game is exciting, but it's not exciting to get five or six yards a pop on the ground, but it will be very successful. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. Keeps it on the bootleg. He lets one fly deep. It's complete. A huge pickup. And they'll do more than move the chains. They'll move that thing more than 30 yards down the field before he's finally stopped. Texas A&M going quickly. From the gun, running back gets to give. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. That linebacker saw the express lane right to the ball carry. And a great job by the defensive line getting some push, making them use their resources on him. Linebacker comes free. Boomer making the backfield for a tackle for a loss. Lost one on that last one. It's second and 11. The play action fake. Got a man. It's Moss. He's brought down solid pickup, but a little bit short on the first down. Listen, running backs are not just running backs anymore. You're going to be a wide receiver in today's football. A great job sneaking out of the backfield, getting the football, letting them get some positive yards. Here comes this home crowd as the defense tries to get off the field on third down. Back to pass, it's Wegman. Got his man in the middle. And he's knocked down immediately, but not before he moves the chains. Man, he had to get rid of that thing. I don't even think he had time to find the laces, but he picks up the first down. Yeah, and that's a great job. You know, third and short, the defense is bringing pressure. He sees the pressure, gets the football out, and gets just enough for the first down. Off play action on first down. Throws toward the end zone. And he's got it! Touchdown, Aggie! Man, really nice job attacking the middle of the field. You see those safeties, man, I want to split them. He splits it right down the middle, throws that post right on the numbers, catches the ball in the end zone, touchdown. Getting set for the point after. Right down the boulevard. So that scoring drive took only six plays. And the scoring play comes on a touchdown pass from 22 yards out. And we're all square as he's set to kick it away. On the run from inside his own five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes and they'll stop him at the 16. South Carolina ready to go on the attack in another offensive odyssey. Wants to throw on first down. Missed his receiver there. It's incomplete.
And now on second down for this offense. Looking to throw, it's Sellers. Fires to the wideout. And he drops it just a little too slippery in the hand. Well, the receiver did everything right. He ran a good route. He got his head around. He just didn't finish the play. Just look it in. You make up the game plan and not a lot on the play sheet for this. Third and long from inside their own 20. From the gun, wants to pass. Fires to the right. What a snag by the defense. Not the biggest return, but he sets him up inside the red zone at the 19. So when you come out of your own end zone, you know, in the shadow of your own end zone, a lot of bad things can happen. You want to kind of get a few first downs, get some space. So if you punt after that point, you can pin them a little bit deep. This is the exact opposite of what happened. Now you set them up in beautiful scoring field position already. Really bad play by the offense. He'll start this drive firing. Shoots it to the left. Give him six. Touchdown, Aggies. Defense has to be better on the back end. They knew this offense was going to come out, and they were going to challenge them. They were going to try to push the ball vertically down the field. They've now given up two touchdown passes in this game. They have got to shore up their play in the back half. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the PAT gives them a 14-7 lead. That's taking advantage of a golden opportunity set up with great field position, and they struck quickly for the touchdown. The kickoff team out there getting set. Bringing it back. That gamble did not pay off as they bring him down at the 12-yard line. And the South Carolina offense is back on the field. They'll go to the ground. Punches ahead. They'll give him a yard to the 13. Oh, man, there's some big hitting going on in the trenches right now. This defense, they take a lot of pride in stopping the run. Let's keep our eye on them throughout the course of the game and see if they can contain this running attack. The Gamecocks come to the line in the hurry-up. Looking for a man, it's Sellers. They're bringing heat. Not much of a chance there, he just had to get rid of it to avoid the sack. They line up with some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. Third and long and he'll try to throw for it. That pass not close as he got drilled trying to deliver it, and it'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, and on money down defensively, you've got to find ways to affect the quarterback. Nice job by the defense getting the pressure, getting to him, getting a hit on him, and forcing the incompletion, and now forcing the fourth down. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. He gets a block. Returns going to get it up around midfield. He'll be down at the 49-yard line. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. On the move, it's Moss. Shakes off the defender. He's run out of bounds, but not before. Turning in a big pickup and moving the sticks for a first down. Nothing the Aggies love more than saying howdy with a strong running game. Yeah, how do you like that first down? How do you like that ground game? Like, that's what they've got to be built on. they they got to have that toughness. When, when the Aggies have that toughness is when you see that their best teams are competing at a high level. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Well, there's a statement by the defensive line. First down play, expecting run, and they just dominated up front. Beat their one-on-ones and force a tackle for a loss. After losing a couple on that last play, here's second and 12. Running back searching for a hole. 
He's brought down, but not before they pick up the big first down. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, right? It's been really hard for this offense in this game to run the football, but they finally break off a big run there. That could be the play they need to really generate momentum and get this run game going. The Aggies will snap it on first and ten. Use the play fake now to throw. And this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack. We're only in the first half already. This guy's got two TD passes. So you could see the defensive coaching staff on the sideline telling this D-line, guys, we got to get after this guy. We have to affect his rhythm and not let him be so comfortable back there. Right there, they were able to get after him. Let's see if they can keep it up. So now on second and long, you start to think just don't fall out of field goal range. Dropping back, it's Wegman. It's complete to the left. They bring him down, but a solid pickup to put them in position to pick up a first down. Well, it's a nice job by the tight end there. He's patient, he fights his way through all the traffic in the middle of the field, running that drag route, making it an easy completion for the quarter. Ball spotted at the 27. They're facing a third and long to try to keep their hopes of a touchdown alive. He took a hit as he threw it and couldn't deliver the football. It's incomplete and fourth down's cut. And the offense got themselves in a tough situation. Third and long, so hard to execute, especially when the field starts to shrink. But the good news is they got a field goal in their back pocket. Now on fourth down, they'll send out the field goal unit. And they'll kick it from the left side, a 44-yard try. It's good. He hit that one right down the middle. And now the lead is even bigger. After putting three on the board, the kickoff unit ready to go. He'll bring it out. It's Harbor. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. Here comes the offense on first down. Give to the back. And they make the stop, and that will likely bring us to the end of the first quarter. While we're only through one, these quarterbacks have been lighting up their stat line. Just about ready to get things started here in the second. We'll see if they continue to flex that muscle. It'll be a draw. And the defense stops him just short of the first down. Maybe needed a few more chain links to move the stats. Effective draw plays in the running game really begin with the quarterback. The quarterback's got to be a great sailor. You've got to really make the defense think it's passed. So you keep your eyes focused downfield till the last possible second turn around and hand it off. And by that point, the defensive ends have rushed way upfield, and there's less bodies for the running backs to have to maneuver around before finally moving forward. Escapes trouble. Fires to the big fella. He steps out of bounds, but he's got a first down on the play. Yeah, he gets the first down, and I tell you what, these are the guys you like to go to. Throw those big body tight ends with the sure mitts over the middle of the field where you know you can get a high percentage throw. Nice catch, nice first down. With a first down, they'll snap it from the 32. Hand off from the gun. You'll take this every time. Five yards on the first down play. I like this guy as a running back because he can run between the tackles and he can also go outside. He can really do it all. And the Gamecocks want to pick up the tempo. They'll run it from the gun. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. 
And you could tell that play went nowhere from the start. It was definitely a great play by that defender. Oh, yeah, he got in the backfield so quick, the running back had absolutely no chance. They line up, and it is a long way to the sticks from here. On third down, he drops to throw. And it's caught inside the 30. And he'll take it in and house it. Touchdown, Gamecocks! When you can run like that, the quarterback is going to give you opportunities. And look at him run by the defenders. QB sees it, stick the hand up in the air, catch the football, get to the end zone. Ready to try the point the after. Is on for the extra point. And with the extra point, they close it to a 17-14 game. So that scoring drive took only six plays. And the score comes on a huge play in the passing game, covering 67 yards to the end zone. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. From inside the 10, here he comes. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Jukes his way for more. Really nice, patient job to find some running room by this junior. You don't always have to run the sexy plays, right? It doesn't have to always be up-tempo and fast and spread and doing all this stuff. Sometimes you just lower your shoulder. Sometimes you just run powerfully. You get the first down. And that's all that matters. They say success rate can be picking up about four or so on first down, first and ten. Just willed his way for a couple out to the 35. Yeah, and the running back didn't get much here, but, you know, you clearly want to always establish the tempo, run the football, be consistent, make that defense physically meet the challenge. After picking up a couple at second and eight, Wide receiver now comes in motion. The give to the tailback. Just sort of a relentless run, getting everything that was available to him, and they'll mark him down at the 40. And you know, when we talk about great third down defenses, it really starts with them getting stops on first and second. You've got to get those stops early in the drives to set up third and long, so that's a missed opportunity on that second down by this defense. On third and short, they keep it on the ground here. And they drag him down, but not before he picks up the first down. And that is just an attitude run, running it right up the middle, right into the teeth of that defense. Texas A&M ready to go with another first down. Some misdirection with the counter. And they try the middle of this stout defense, and they rise to the challenge. That back had absolutely nowhere to run the football. Actually, is he counting? I think he's counting to make sure there's only 11 guys on defense. Got stuffed on first down. It's second and 10. They've got him looking run. Now they're going to throw it. Unloads to the wideout. Complete to the right. And chunk plays are the name of the game, and they get one here before the defense finally makes a stop. That's what's so scary about this offense. They've got guys in the perimeter that can change the game in one single play, and you saw it right there. Too much speed on the perimeter to create that explosive play. Texas A&M going up-tempo. From the red zone, looking for a space. And to get rid of it quickly. Can't find his man as he took a shot trying to deliver that football, and it'll be second down. Doesn't take this defense a lot of time to get to the quarterback, man. They've got speed all over the place. They hit him so quickly, and because of that, the ball falls incomplete. After the quarterback and receiver failed to hook up, they'll try it again on second down. 
Back to throw, it's Wegman. Fires to the middle. Touchdown, Aggies! And they add six more to the board with that trip to the house. One of the reasons this offense is so exciting to watch, they've got guys that are dangerous after the catch. And if this quarterback gets through his progression, David, he hits you in stride, these guys will take it to the house. Man, it's your job to do the rest, right? You hit me in stride where I don't have to stop running, I don't have to break down. It makes it so easy, the connection between quarterback, wide receiver. You can tell this is a good one, and that's why they got six on that play. Lining up to add another. And with the extra point, they're now up by a touchdown and a field goal at 10. They march 79 yards on the drive, and the capper a 19-yard toss for the touchdown. They're just about ready to kick it away. Set to advance on the football. And they thought about a return, then thought better of it. They'll bring it out to the 25. South Carolina ready to go on the attack in another offensive odyssey. They are trailing by 10 here, Jesse, but this is the type of team that seems comfortable in an offensive shootout. You got to hold serve at this point, right? You got to drive the field, put some more points up on the board. Yeah, they just scored. You can answer that now and keep this thing close, Dave. And I think you're used to that as offense. Like, football is so fast-paced now and you score so quickly, it's not that big of a deal to get down 10. You keep being you, keep being aggressive. Leaves it with the running back. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And I think a lot of times when offenses run these counters, you're going to fake one way, right? Pull guys the other direction. If you can get some penetration really quickly, get behind those pullers, you got a chance to get in the backfield just like right there and create a TFL. It's third down from their own 34 as they try to keep the drive moving. They'll try to move the chains on the ground. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Well, the linebacker's showing you read and react. He knew exactly where that running play was going, and he beat the football to the line of scrimmage and forced the TFL. The Gamecocks decide to punt it away. In punt formation to kick it away. Now on the return. Everybody stays in their lanes well enough, and they stop him at the 31-yard line. Texas A&M has it back on the offense, ready to go to work. And David, how they would love to stick it in the end zone one more time after that last drive. And once you get the defense on their heels, and you back them off a little bit, you get in a little bit of rhythm, it's really hard to stop Jesse, and they're going to try to do it again right here. And if you're this play caller, you're loving what's happening right now because everything you dialed up on that last drive ended up working out. You're just looking at your play sheet. Everything you're picking is working. Let's see if they can pull it off again here. Looking downfield, it's Wegman. Throws for the tight end. He makes a catch. And the defense makes the immediate tackle, but he has enough for the first down. Well, this defense is being challenged, and this secondary in particular. And I know a DB made the tackle there, but we're only in the second quarter, and already this quarterback has over 200 yards passing. The offense setting up shop at the 46, first and 10. Wide receiver coming across in motion. Off the play fake on first down to throw. And that's just a flat misfire, not even close to his receiver. After the misfire, it's second and ten. On the run, it's Moss. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. Better find the earplugs. Here comes the noise, backing this defense on third down. From the gun, wants to pass. Throws to the tight end. It's caught downfield. They are finding soft spots in this defense. He's got it down to the 25. How about this offense? They're rolling. They got a couple first downs together. Defense. 
Next, what's your response? What do you got? You got to make some adjustments here. And the Aggies in the hurry up. Running it to the right. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Man, what a spectacular play by that defensive end to come up with the tackle there. And you see those guys get off the football so fast. Most of these guys are 250 to 275 pounds, but they get off the ball fast, low. And the offensive linemen, they have no chance to stop those guys as quick and as fast as they are. To the air, it's Wegman. Quickly complete. And he'll be run out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. Not a very productive play there. Seventh play of the drive coming up and a long way to go on third down. Looking to throw and he needs a chunk play. Caught over the middle. It's Thomas. Can't quite cross the plane to get the six, but they'll have the first down. Love to see the fearlessness of a quarterback to work the middle of the field. And he's got so much confidence in his own arm talent to be able to get that football there before the defense can break it up. It's first and goal as Texas A&M comes to the line. Powers forward. Into the end zone he goes. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Look, it's still early, but we have some real distance being put on the scoreboard right now. You do. It's early, but you got to find something positive. Right now, everything going in the other direction. So how are you going to respond when you've been hitting the mouth early in this football game? Got to find something positive quick. Lining up for the PAT. And with the extra point, they now have a three possession lead at 17. They took it 68 yards on that drive, and they closed the deal, pushing their way inches into the end zone. About to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. And he takes this from inside the five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. And the South Carolina offense is back on the field. Wasting no time throwing on this drive. Incomplete, man, is he lucky to get that one back defense that close to an interception. Man, the defense is making it tough on this quarterback early. They already have an interception. They almost came away with another one there. They're doing a great job reading his eyes and breaking on the ball. Now on second down after the incompletion. Fast motion from the offense. Looking for room. It's Sanders. Out across the 20 to the 21-yard line, a three-yard gain. And a lot of times you want those big plays. You want those splash plays. But sometimes you're going to take some losses. You're not going to run the football overly well. But if you continue to run it, you can at least create some balance. You at least have the threat of it. Otherwise, you're just going to abandon it, and now it's just going to be a passing game. On third down, going up top. Right down the middle. Got him downfield. They make the stop, but this passing game does some damage, and they move the sticks with the first down. Wow, and what a great job by that quarterback, finding his open receiver on third down. You know, guys, one of the most telling stats at the end of the game is third down conversion percentage. If you're a great third down team, it's invaluable to your offensive success, and that's why teams drill third down so much in practice. Comes out throwing on first down. And they got him for the sack. Yeah, that's a great job. And listen, this quarterback's had success. He's already thrown for two touchdowns. we got to make him feel uncomfortable. This is still early in the game. Nice job by the defense getting a hit on the quarterback and making him think a little bit. Big first down sack for the defense. Brings up second down. 
wants to throw. It's Sellers. Tight end finds a soft spot. You know, we joke that the tight end's always open, David, but play action almost makes it impossible to keep them comfortable. Yeah, because those guys, they're such good blockers most of the time. They're big and physical, and they self-block for a second, and then they run open, and they find holes in zones, or they get good matchups, and man, those tight ends nowadays are nightmares for defenses to try to stop. On third and long, try to convert through the air. Looking left, balls it in. He will step out of bounds, but not before the big pickup and a first down for this offense. And it looks as if they've buzzed down. Replay wants to have another peek at that last play. And the play will stand after the replay booth just does a little double checking to make sure. A strike downfield. And he eluded the defense, and he'll take it all the way. Touchdown, South Carolina! Big time touchdown there to get some much needed momentum. You gotta find something, right? Who are you gonna go to to make that big play to get you back into it? You're not back in it yet. It's not, it's not tied. You're not there yet, but you're starting to inch back into it and get some momentum going. On to attempt the try. And the PAT will draw them one point closer. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. And he's going to bring it out of the end zone. And they'll haul down the returner to start us on the next drive. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Coming out on first down with the play fake. He tosses one high and deep down the left side. And the throw downfield winds up incomplete, and there's a good reason for that. This guy was being mugged by the defender. And the defender just way too handsy on that last play. You could see all the contact as the ball was in the air. He simply can't do it, and the referee's caught. How about getting the foot down on that throw for the big completion? Awesome body control and great job, too, knowing where he is on the field to make sure he got his feet down in bounds. At this point, this guy's been open all over the field, and if I'm the QB, man, I keep throwing him the ball. The offense lines up at the 41 with a first and 10. Looking to throw, it's Wegman. It's caught. Really confident throw and catch there. Big pick up, and they have a first down. Well, a really nice catch there, and I'll tell you, ever since Texas A&M made the move to the SEC, their path to the national championship got way harder. If they're going to win today, they've got to come up with big plays in the passing game. This guy gives them that mm -hmm. opportunity. He gives them a chance not just to compete for conference titles, but for national championships, too. Catch in the middle, it's Thomas. Ripping oh, off a good chunk inside the 25, okay. and they're set up with a first down. He's now over 150 yards receiving, and the Aggies ready to go whoop. <laughs> yeah, ready to go whoop, ready to celebrate. They're excited. And listen, when you can find these playmakers that you feature and you consistently feature, this is when Aggies go nuts. They go crazy because their offenses are fun, exciting. A&M comes back out with another first down. Looking to move it through the air. Grabbed over the middle. It's Barber. He's there to make the stop, but the damage has been done as they pick up the first down on the throw and catch. Yeah, and he's been throwing it all over the yard, and he's now over 300 yards on the day, so been a successful day. Now, 300 yards, I don't know, Palmer, 300 nowadays, that's like what back in the day for you? <laughs> 
<laughs> that would have been 500. I would have won the Heisman, maybe. It's a big deal today in college football, no doubt. Now listen, he's in a rhythm right now. He's in a groove. We've seen good decision-making. He's been playing on time, and he's been deadly accurate throwing it. And guess what? This game is far from over. It'll be second down, and remember, they can pick up a first without scoring. Back to the air one more time. He's brought down, but he went backwards after that completion, not the way they had it drawn up. Hey, on offense, you got to know when the play's over. That one there, nowhere to go with it after he caught the football. You start trying to juke guys, you start trying to run backward. This ain't high school anymore. When you used to be able to make that play years ago, you're not doing it here in big time college football. Not good. Throws toward the end zone. And it's caught! Touchdown, Aggie! That touchdown puts them up by at least two scores. Too early to say it's over? Probably, but boy, it's starting to feel that way. It might not be over, but you're in trouble, and you better find some answers really, really quickly. This team is putting everything together, and right now you got nothing going. Come on, give me something. He'll try to tack on one more. And with the extra point, they now have a three-possession lead at 17. They took it 71 yards down the field, and the scoring play comes on a touchdown pass from 22 yards out. The kickoff team out there set to boot it away. On the move from inside is five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. South Carolina ready to go on the attack in another offensive odyssey. Back to throw, it's Sellers. They find themselves in a pretty deep hole here, but maybe a chance to grab a little momentum and regroup at halftime. Yeah, a big chance. Like, this is, this is an opportunity. This is the biggest opportunity in front of them in the game right now. You gotta get some points on the board. You gotta create something positive, Jesse. There hasn't been a whole lot to be positive about in the first half. If I'm playing quarterback, I'm locating my go-to guy at receiver. Who can I count on one-on-one -on -one to go and make me a play? Maybe even one-on-two. Who can go up, catch the ball, get us some yards, and get us some points? Trying to find his man on first down. Fires to the tight end. And just a short, safe pass play. They pick up a few. They wanted to get the ball to the tight end, and they've already done it five times, and we're not even to the half. I'm about to say, mission accomplished. Yeah, that's what they want to do. Take advantage of the matchup, right? Zoner, man, I like my big fella. I like using the tight end all I can. Great job working him into the offense. He's a playmaker. Find him. On second down, he'll let it fly. Fires deep toward the end zone. And good coverage there to knock it away and deny the score. Well, you wonder if the defense has started to figure it out finally here. In the first half, this guy has been absolutely lighting you up, and finally they get some bodies back there anticipating the QB to look his way to force an incompletion. They couldn't make the connection on second down. Now a third and seven to keep the drive alive. From the gun, wants to pass. Didn't have much of a choice, just had to throw that one away. It'll be fourth down. Third and short in college football today. You see so much more pass than you used to. The offense stays aggressive, and I think they stay aggressive because they know they're in field goal range. They got that three in their back pocket. And the Gamecocks will punt it away on fourth down. No opportunity to run it back as the ball goes out of bounds. Time dwindling away as they try to put points on the board right before the half. Handoff to the single running back. And the freshman does a great job using his technique and getting the man on the ground. We played two quarters here. Time to go to Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Fellas, what an environment there today. All the animosity and flat-out hatred that comes with a good old-fashioned rivalry game on display in that first half. Toughest job inside that stadium right now might just be the scoreboard operator after all those first downs and touchdowns. 
big plays have to find this one thanks to two of the best receiving four in all of college football. Let's see if these defenses can adjust and make the necessary chess moves. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how this rivalry matchup plays out. The Gamecocks will kick it away first and will start the second half. He'll bring it back from inside his five. And the return man reaches the end of the line, and down he goes. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. Off the play fake on first down to throw. The sure hands, it's Moss. And they'll shove him out of bounds after the short game. This defense is going to have to be careful. Not only do they have to worry about this guy running the football, but they've got to keep their eye on him when he runs routes, too. He is a versatile back. This offense has a second down play. Scanning the field, it's Wegman. Got his man on the right. Makes a catch and knock down. So an example of a tight end doing a little unheralded work to set up a much better third down situation. And I like the QB here. I like the decision where I understand, let's get this football out, let's get some positive yards, and then get to third down, and we can still have a better situation now because we got rid of the football and took the yards that were there. On third and short, the power run here. Brought to the ground, but not before getting enough for the first down. Yeah, third and one, you know what time it is. It's about the big boys up front. you got to give me a little bit of space, a little crack. You just can't give up that penetration so my running back can fall forward just like that and get the first down. Texas A&M back to work with another first down. They're going to ride this running back. And he slid through that attempt, and he's got room. So runs like that that can really help your field position as they're up at the 35. When running backs square their shoulders up, it's when they have the most power. You see him square his shoulders up, break tackles, be strong, continue to plow his way forward, just making it really easy on everybody in this offense by breaking tackles. Here's the handoff. Can't get him to the ground. And he didn't have a whole lot of operating room after the juke, and he stopped for a short game. That was a nice second down run and set up 30 inches. And now it's physical time, right? Like, they know you might run the football. You know you probably want to run the football. How can you be more physical? Sometimes bring some extra bodies, some extra tight ends in. Go to that play that you know is your short yardage play. They'll try to pick it up on the ground. Really nice run there. Good, solid pickup, and they'll move the sticks with a first down. And a great job by the offensive line. You're going to run the ball right at the middle. You better control the line of scrimmage. You can see the center, the guard, the tackles doing a good job getting on their guys just enough where this running back can get into space and make the big game. This Texas A&M offense is wasting no time. He'll pull it on the read. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Well, they were trying to set up the option, but the quarterback had no chance. Did you see the defensive tackle penetrate? What a great first step. He shot right through the offensive line and got the TFL. After losing a couple of yards, it's now second and 12 as they try to keep this drive moving. Got him looking run. He wants to throw. Snagged in the middle. It's green. And they pick up just a few on that completion. I think that time offensively, you're just trying to take what the defense is giving you, right? They're playing zone coverage. You've got your big fella just working right over the ball. It's an easy pitch and catch. Just take the profit, and let's keep going. They'll try to move the chains on this third and long from the 50. Back to pass. It's Wegman feeling some heat. And the defense will corral the quarterback, and down he goes at midfield. Pretty nice as a defense, right? When you can go nickel, put five DBs on the field and not have to blitz anyone, trusting your front four to get the job done on third down, and they do it right there getting the sack. Texas A&M will have to boot it away. Second time today they've been forced to punt. A fairly short distance here toward the sidelines, not his best work. And the South Carolina offense is back on the field. 
They hope to be able to cash in on this drive, David, after having to punt it last time. Yeah, and I think this offense needs to start it with the first play. You need to be successful and productive on that first play, and it gets you in less predictable situations. No doubt, too. And don't you just feel like there's a little bit more sense of urgency on this drive? It just feels like they've got to be able to put some points up on the board here. A negative play to open the drive. Let's see what they've got on second and 14. From the gun, the give, looking for room. Defense there to stop him after a two-yard gain to the 31. And the Gamecocks racing to the line in the hurry-up. Trying to move the sticks on third down through the air. And there was nowhere to go for this quarterback, and down he goes. Well, this defense has a three-possession lead at this point. You're seeing how dominant they are up front. They have done such a good job recruiting D linemen, linebackers, guys that can blitz. They've got speed. They've found guys in the portal. They've recruited guys out of high school, and they are just eating right now. The Gamecocks will punt this one away. Three and out, they got stuck in reverse. They hope the punt can bail them out. Another punt on the way. Got to make sure those hammies and glutes all activated. Don't want any muscle pulls from overuse. They'll put a stop to that return at about the 37-yard line. They'll run it out of the shotgun. They finally get him on the ground, but the big running play moves to change for the first down. This running back loves running into the teeth of the defense. In between the tackles, he keeps a low pad level, and he's got some speed. Now they'll try to cash in this drive. First and 10 from the 50. Wide out in motion. Might as well give it to him again. Gets it all the way down to the 39-yard line. It'll be a first down. There's really no secret to it, David. When this guy's running well, this offense is so hard to stop. It opens up everything, and he's having a great day, showing you a little bit of everything, and this offense has got it rolling on the ground. They'll snap it from the 39, first and 10. He's looking to throw it. Grabbed in the middle, it's Allen. They make the stop after the catch and still some work to do to pick up that first down. Well, the defense playing zone coverage there. They're taking away all of the QB's primary options down the field, so he has to check it down to the drag running underneath. That last completion has him set up second and short. To the air, it's Wegman. Looking to the big tight end. And he intercepts it! They didn't give him much of a chance to make that play even bigger, but the turnover has him set up at the 16. Really nice job there by the defense, because I think they baited the QB into trying to fit that one in over the middle of the field. Remember, it's a big zone coverage. They've all got their eyes on him back there in the pocket, and they just let him feel like, maybe I can fit this football in. Not so fast. They come away with the pick. South Carolina ready to go on the attack in another offensive odyssey. From the gun, running back on the move. They shut it down quickly, but he gets two out to the 18. And the defense doing a great job committing to the run. When you commit to the run like this, obviously you can give up some plays in the passing game, but you got to stop the run first. And the Gamecocks headed quickly to the line. Here's a quick throw out to the left. And a good job of coverage by that defense, just a short pickup. They've done a really good job creating the matchups they want out of the spot. Yeah, dude, get that guy matched up on a linebacker. That guy matched up on a safety. Keep him away from the corners by putting him in the slot. Get him the football, let him make plays. On third and long, he's going to have to throw for it. Getting some heat. Got rid of it just in time. And they can't make the connection on third down. 
Yeah, and this defense hadn't had a lot of success. This offense has been doing what it wants at will. Finally getting to the QB. Finally getting some pressure. Finally getting a big hit on him. That'll pay some dividends down the road. The Gamecocks send out the punt unit. They're up to a half dozen kicks today. A fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. That last drive was promising for a while, but you just can't mess it up at the end with the pick, Jesse. No, you've got to be able to finish drives, especially in this game, if you're going to win. And, David, they've got to be able to eliminate the mental mistakes. Yeah, and I don't think you get conservative or play it safe. You can trust your guy. I think you put the ball right back in his hands and let him do his thing. They got nothing on the last play. It's second and ten. They want to run this quarterback. Found enough room to get it into enemy territory. They're down at the 43-yard line. I'm not sure what the quarterback saw on that one, but that was a very quick decision to take off and run with it to try to get his offense some positive yards. Now it's a first down from the 43-yard line. Used the play fake. Now to throw. Got it in the middle. It's green. And you make the stop at the 33, but 10 yards on that play and a first down. Well, they pick up the first against zone coverage. I think a big part of this for young quarterbacks out there is if you're going to be throwing into zone coverage, you got to throw on ton. You can't stare down receivers because the entire defense has their eyes on you, so you can't telegraph where the ball's going. You've got to hold it to the very last possible second. Try to freeze defenders with your eyes and then throw the ball into open areas of the field, anticipating where your guy's going to be. There's not a lot more beautiful in football than the play action and the open tight end. Yeah, because it freezes those linebackers. It freezes those safeties because they have to come up for a second and play the run. And then the big tight ends, big targets on the back end can catch the football and make big plays. They'll run play action. Looking for the end zone. Gets it into the end zone, but there is a flag down. We'll see oh, if this oh, one is oh, coming oh, back. Oh. That penalty moves the ball back 10 yards. We'll replay the down. They'll line up for a second down play. To the air, it's Wegman. And here's the third interception of the night. Looking for more room. The 30. He's at the 10. Touchdown, Gamecocks. The defense puts six on the board with a big time interception return. The DB saw it. He thought, don't drop it, don't drop it. Then thought, don't get caught, don't get caught. And he didn't. The pick six. Man, these guys can play offense, too. Now, look at this. I show you, I can be a wide receiver. Coach might split them out at wide receiver next week after making that big play. But defense, great job making the interception. And you're right, doing something with it. Don't just slide down. Don't be content. Take that thing all the way back. The AT unit on the field. And with the extra point, every little bit counts as they get closer. They'll kick it off and send that defense right back out there to try to score again after the pick six. Here he comes from inside his own five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. That last pick six after a drive like that, David can swing the momentum of a game. The defense is still celebrating. I mean, such a big play. I mean, they, they gave up some yards, but did what they're supposed to do. Now, Jesse, this offense has to put a drive together. Yeah, they have to recapture some momentum here. What they can't do is go three and out and give the ball right back. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. He's looking to throw. Coming after. And here's a fumble way behind the line. How about that alert play from the defense to scoop it up? Touchdown, Gamecocks! The defense with the scoop and score. 
The defense striking with a scoop and score touchdown. And defense is about getting guys to the football. Sometimes you just get that hit, and the ball pops out, more guys swarm into the football. Great effort. Scoop that thing up. Now do some damage with it. You always wanted to play offense anyways. Convert that defensive player, offensive player. Give me that six. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And it's up and good as they draw just a touch closer. That is a defensive player's dream. Ball sitting there, chance to scoop it up, run with it, and they don't stop you until the band starts playing. They're out there to kick it off. The return team must rivet that ball to their rib cage. Can't afford another turnover. Here's the return from inside his tent. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. They think there's room to run to the right here. Crosses the 30, he's got a lane. A huge play, and they get it all the way to the 45-yard line. This is the kind of performance, guys, that sort of etches your name in the lore of a rival. And playing big in this big moment, on this big stage, it is so nice to have a playmaker like that that you can highlight, that you can focus on, that you can trust in. He was so excited coming into this game, too, because he knows that oftentimes your legacy as a player is defined by how you play in rivalry games like this. Solid fundamentals on that tackle from this freshman. After picking up a couple at second and eight. Got it behind the line. It's Thomas. The defense wouldn't let him loose, and even though it's a completion, they lost yardage. He has been in see ball, get ball mode all day, and he is making his mark in this rivalry game, guys. I'll tell you, he was sick and tired of reading about and hearing about the offenses coming into this one. This guy had his own designs and his own plans. He has been balling, David, all over the field. And it's so fun. A rivalry game, you have so much emotion, so much passion. Well, guess what? You can let that out on defense. And defense, you can fly around, make plays, and he's been doing it all game long. Well, on offense, no doubt, right? You've had success. You're throwing some tutties. Why not keep throwing it? They're going to keep being aggressive. You're going to have to do a better job, though, keeping this quarterback standing up. The Aggies send out the punt team to kick it away. He won't be able to return this one as it goes out of bounds. And the South Carolina offense is back on the field. They've hit a bit of a lull here, and they need to get things cranked up with this possession, Jesse. Just haven't had a rhythm these last couple of possessions, but I'll tell you, the best way to get back into one is to run the football. Establish yourselves up front the line of scrimmage and help keep these third downs manageable. Yeah, and the best news is your defense at least forced a punt of their own. So now you can go answer with that good stop while this game is still close. Let's just go keep putting more points on the board, and let's see less of the punter. Motion from the offense. Looking to pass. It's Sellers. Lost one deep down the right side. And this is dropped. Incomplete pass. He had a huge gain in his fingers, and he couldn't hold on. The defense has not had an answer for this guy today. Already over 150 yards receiving. That time, the ball falls incomplete. But we haven't seen that happen too often today. Couldn't find his man last time, and that leaves him with a third and six. From the gun, wants to pass. Makes the grab. It's Sanders. Deep to shallow. That's what I have to understand that as a defensive guy. I take away those passes beyond the sticks, and I react to those quick throws they have to the running back. It's my athlete versus yours. The defense won that battle. And the Gamecocks will send out the punt unit. In punt formation to kick it away. Pulls it in at the 25. Turns like that are why you don't settle for the fair catch if you don't have to. Picks up just a little bit of yards to help out the O. The give to the back. 
Able to scrounge three yards out of that one somehow in second and seven. It's just so nice to know you can start off on first down with positive plays. Positive yards, hand the football off, set up a good second down. Got three on first down at second and seven. Now the play fake. Got out of trouble, got rid of it. Got it in the middle, it's Moss. Makes the grab, and it's enough for the first down before he's dragged to the ground. And a great job by the QB, finding the running back, getting the football where he can do some damage after the catch, and most importantly, get the first down. See if they can turn this drive into points. They've got it first and 10 at the 50. He wants to throw. Catch in the middle, it's Watson. And that is good versatility there, and a big hit from the backer in pass coverage. Look, you can't take away everything, right? So you give them that and rally and make a solid tackle. Yeah, and a lot of times in zone coverage, I, I like when I can get all the eyes on the quarterback. I like when I can see the routes and see him develop in the middle. And you could tell they had keys on the tight end. He wasn't going anywhere after he caught that football. Almost had the completion. Just missed it. Oh, man, you don't see many of those anymore. Nowadays, the gloves are so good. The hands are so good. You don't see a lot of drop passes. Missed opportunity there for the receiver. Decibels rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. Snap it to the back. And they did not let him reach the line to gain. It'll bring up a decision here. Texas A&M will have to boot it away. He's getting plenty of work. Fourth time we've seen this guy punt it today. Make sure that there's not going to be a return on this one. Ball's out of bounds, and I think they'll mark it right around the 25. Wants to throw on first down off the play fake. Release to the back. Grab near the sticks. It's Sanders. They make the tackle, but not before he finishes off this third period with a big play. And talk about spreading the ball around. Everyone getting a chance to show off the hands based on the number of targets we've seen. First down to start the drive after the break. Looking for space, it's Sanders. A solid pickup there before the defense is able to make the stop. It's a nice game, but the big theme here is they just haven't been able to get the run game going on offense. They've been very one-dimensional. They're just not being physical enough to point the attack. The Gamecocks moving quickly to the line. Off the play fake. Throws for the tight end. Makes the grab. And a nice grab with a defender right on him, and he's down at the 20. They knew they could slip that tight end behind the backers with that play-action fake. Well, it's because I can't win, Reese. I, I have to play the run. You know, all these RPOs, all these different things, I it makes me come up and use my eyes and play run. And these tight ends are so valuable to find space behind. Knew where he was going with the football the whole time because the big fella, he's always open. And the defense makes a play, and they get the quarterback down at the 26. Well, you just sort of felt like this defense had to do something to get this quarterback out of a rhythm, right? He's been picking them apart all drive long, and finally, they come up with a sack. That is the last thing you want on first down as an offensive sack. Now it's second down. Back to throw, it's Sellers. Fires to the wide out. That, friends, is a busted play. Incomplete. They're close enough for a makeable field goal from the 26, but they'd love to convert this third and long. Looking to throw, and he needs a bunch. Gets it out fast. 
And sure, tackling there to keep him from getting to the first down marker. Now, a fourth down. So on fourth down, here comes the field goal kicker in a huge spot. It is perfect. And guys, we are deadlocked here in the final period. And this kicker has ice water in his veins. Fourth quarter, you need to make the field goal to tie it up, and that kid just drilled it. Here comes the kickoff as we are all tied up in the fourth quarter. He'll start the return inside his five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes and they'll stop him at the 16. Texas A&M has it back and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Caught over the middle, it's Watson. How about this backer in pass coverage and bringing the big hit stick with him too. The modest gain on the completion really shows why you want to run the zone. Make them execute and rally to the ball. 100%. Zone eyes on the quarterback. I see him throw the football, break on it, go make tackles, live to fight another down. Dropping back, it's Wegman. Working that left side now. And they knock him down, but he got past the line of the game. Well, it's a nice play design there. You're getting the running back involved in the pass game. Quarterback gives it to him early so he can go to work upfield and get the first down. Finally, some signs of life from this offense, which has done nothing in the second half. It's first and ten. On the run, it's Moss. He stopped after getting a yard out to the 30. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. He'll try it again. Finding a way to put that foot in the ground and get it up to the 37-yard line. Yeah, another good run. I feel like we could put that on loop, Jesse. Just another good run. Another good run. Another good run. Over 150 yards on the day. He's been the complete package, showing off all his skills today. Big third down as the crowd gets behind this defense. He'll try to pick it up on the ground. Looks as if Texas A&M will have enough for the first down. All right, nothing flashy there. He just did what it took to get the first down. The Aggies are on the move. Wide receiver shows motion. Softened him up with a run. Now to throw. Catch in the middle. It's Allen. My old coach said, you'll never go broke taking a profit. Take what's there, take the positive yards, and never complain. Now on second down. They're going to run it. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. And there was no space, nowhere to go. That play went absolutely nowhere. Sometimes you just need a dude to show up and make a play, and he did. Sometimes you just need to block that dude, and they did. A chance to sort of put the defense on its heels if you convert a third and long. This one from the 44. Got away from trouble and got rid of it. Finds his man. It's Moss. And the defense able to drag him down, but not before. They'll recycle that down marker. You know, it's a nice throw by the QB there. When you're throwing to running backs, you got to make it easy. So you want to put it right on their body, make the catch simple, and let them go to work like they did just there, getting that first. And the Aggies getting set on first and ten. From the gun, they'll try to impose their will. Carrying the ball with attitude down to the 42. How nice is it as a play caller when you've got a running back as good as this guy, right? I mean, you can just dial up conservative run calls. Nothing has to be too tricky, too fancy. You just know he's going to go make good things happen. Even when it's not blocked properly, 
he is still finding ways to rip off long runs. This guy now has over 150 yards rushing in the game. Doesn't look like he's slowing down, guys. Slam to the ground, but not before he gets the first down. This dude is dealing at receiver right now, and he's going to have them yelling well past midnight. Uh, and these, these receivers are the ones that scare the mess out of you, the Mike Evans that on the outside that you know they're throwing in the football, and you ain't got anybody that can match up. And, and when the Aggies find those guys, these offenses hum like crazy. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. You see all this movement in football now, all the stem, the defensive line, they're sliding right before the snap, creating confusion for the offensive line. Then they're moving back and stunting. Really good job by the defense. Continue to move, continue to stunt, continue to get in the backfield and make this life hard on this running back. Looking downfield, it's Wegman. Flips it out in the flat. And the defense had that one well covered, just a short game there. What's important in this game, this offense gets the running back involved out of the perimeter in space where he can do some damage. That time they got it to him throwing the football. He picked up a couple of yards, but it gives the defense something to think about. These fans stepping up to help this defense on third down. From the gun, wants to pass. He's looking deep. He caught it. Almost took it all the way there, but it's a huge gain, and they're set up with a first and goal. I love that from this offense. Three is good. You're in field goal range, but now we're set up with first and goal because of great third down execution by this offense. Stay aggressive. Even when you get in this part of the field when everything shrinks and gets a little bit harder, you still want to be aggressive. They're going to run it. Touchdown, Aggies! And with that, they move out front here in the fourth. And what a push up front by this offensive line. Everyone playing in unison, driving out of their stance, working into the second level, hats on hats, creating a lane for that running back. Now they'll line up for what they hope is automatic. The extra point is good, and now in the fourth, they're up by a touchdown and an extra point. And that is what they mean when they say ball control, a 14-play touchdown drive. And they capped it off with a one-yard plunge, lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. And he'll return it and try to get behind his blockers. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Off the play fake on first down. Fires to the big fella. And that corner came in hot despite knowing that he was giving up some size. That throw and catch, a really good example of why coaches don't want a quarterback to get stuck on a particular target, isn't it, Dave? Yep, that's exactly right. Find the guy who's open because you got so many guys that have so much speed that can do so much damage on the field. Find my matchup, get it to him, let him do the rest. On the run, it's Sanders. And you can forget running in the middle against this defense. Well, they're trying to run the football there, just nowhere to go. They got dominated up front at the point of attack. And the Gamecocks are in the hurry up. Looking to throw it to Sellers. Oh, what a grab by the defense! Didn't get a chance to show off those return skills, but he gives his offense the ball at the 29. And we know turnover margin is a huge part of winning ball games. Interception number two, his quarterback has to do a better job taking care of the football. Don't force it. Take the high completion percentage stuff. Don't always try to go for the big play. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. 
And now that cushion is a little bit smaller, Jesse, and any mistake would get magnified. Yeah, a little bit of pressure now on this offense too, David. I think they got to go back to their playmakers and get these guys going in the game. No doubt, find those plays. Those plays you know you can run them in your sleep. You make sure you execute. Build this lead a little bit bigger. Put this thing away in the fourth quarter. Got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. He's looking to throw. Deep shot for the end zone. And swatted down by the defense to stop the scoring opportunity. Yeah, and I like the shot, the aggressive play down the field. We like all those jump balls up to my receiver because usually the receiver makes the play and makes the defender look bad. Nice job by the defender getting a hand on it, tipping that ball away from the wide receiver. On third down, he'll try to pick it up through the air. Grabbed over the middle. It's Thomas. And they'll finally bring him down after he rips off a huge play. Well, this guy's been a go-to guy for this offense all game long. We've seen that. And here on a critical third down late in the game with the lead, guess who shows up with another big one? That guy. And this offense not only has a chance to extend the lead, but they can also drain that clock. Turning to the running game on first and goal. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And a great job by the linebacker. You can tell, starting to crowd the line of scrimmage, get up there in the line of scrimmage, see it, diagnose it, get in the backfield, get the running back on the ground for the tackle for the loss. Defense rolls up deep in its own end on that last play. Now a second and long coming. He'll run it up the middle, trying to pick his way to the end zone. He bullies his way all the way down to the five-yard line. And down here near the goal line, you've got to be physical. And this guy's proven it today, Palmer. They've given it to him. He's put it in the end zone twice already. I'm going to keep featuring him. So you know the defense is going to be king too, right? Because he's hurting them a little bit in this game already. They're going to be finding a way to try to get some penetration, anticipating this guy to touch it again. Fires to the end zone. And he's got it! Touchdown, Aggies! Now they've got a little breathing room. They are in firm control of this game, guys. But you never want to let up in a rivalry game. Because it only takes one play. We know how much of a factor momentum can be in these types of rivalry games, David. So this game's still far from over. And this is where my leadership and my experience comes into play. When you got guys that have been through these fires, been through these rivalry games, you know the swings happen quick. Now you got to swing it back your way. Getting set for the point after. And the extra point is true, and they have a two-touchdown lead, up 14 in the fourth. That makes the score. Texas a 52, South Carolina, 38. The kickoff team takes the field to boot this one away. Sets a kick this one away. Fielded in the end zone, it's McDowell. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. South Carolina ready to go on the attack in another offensive odyssey. From the gun, the running back has it. Ran to that daylight to pick up six to the 22. Hey, five to six yards a pop. I don't know if you guys are really good at math, but that usually equals a first down every couple carries. So don't forget about the run game. Keep them honest. Pound that rock. The Gamecocks want to move quickly. To throw, it's Sellers. Quick strike complete. A quick tackle made, but he's got plenty for the first down. I think if you're the head coach at this point, you're telling your offense, it doesn't matter what's happened up to this point. Obviously, things haven't gone our way, but we have a chance to execute in a two-minute situation and give ourselves a chance to win. Let's go do it one play at a time. He'll come out throwing on first down. He's going for the big play. Oh, he toast the coverage. Got it deep downfield. And they get him down at the 43, but this is the kind of explosive play you want to build on. This offensive line does such a good job communicating in their pass protection. You can see guys passing defenders off to one another, and that's why the quarterback had so much time to complete that throw deep downfield.
Going up top on first down. Pressure coming. Good job to avoid the negative play and just get rid of that thing. Second and ten after the previous play. The aerial assault continues. That's caught. It's Harbor. Good, solid pick up there. Now they can start to smell it with the first down at the 31. Sometimes you'll hear guys derisively say, well, he just piles up numbers. When the number gets close to 450, that's worth doing. And that's why they throw it as much as they do, because they've got a difference maker playing the quarterback position. He gives them a chance to be explosive and light up the scoreboard. Looking for a man. It's Sellers. Throws to the wideout. It's complete! And he's brought down after a nice game. Nice job by the quarterback. Bring snap and post snap. He knew the defense was going to be playing zone coverage. And there was no doubt in his mind where he was going with that football. And the Gamecocks with the first and ten. Two minutes now left in this one, and time is running short if they want to find a way to pull this one out. It's first and ten from the 13. He's going to pass. Got it! Couldn't quite nudge it in. Not sure you could get much closer, but it'll be first and goal. You know, you just can't coach toughness in quarterbacks. This guy's been sacked multiple times in this one, and on that last play, he gets drilled again, but he delivers a strike. I'll tell you what, this, this guy's going to be in an ice bath after the game. Everybody has to be set. They have to get it off. He's looking to pass. Unleashes to the end zone. I love the coverage on defense. In the red zone, everyone's got their eyes on the quarterback, and they're flying to the football, and you saw that there on the incompletion. They'll try it again from the one on second and goal. He's looking to throw. Pocket starts to collapse. And he was hit just as he released it, and it falls to the turf. That's a phenomenal job getting after the quarterback and getting a hit on him to affect his accuracy, because if they didn't get the pressure, that was going to be a touchdown. He had a guy wide open in the end zone. That was a golden opportunity, but the defense comes up big. They'll try to pass it in on third and goal. And it's caught for the late touchdown. So how about this? Maybe we are set up for a finish. And, and that's step one. Great job by this offense getting in the end zone. Now you got to go get the stop. you got to get the football back. you got to find a way to do something to create a turnover, get an onside to get the football back, to get back in this football game. Ready to try the point after. And the PAT will draw them one point closer. So a drive there of 85 yards. It was capped off by a one-yard touchdown pass. The kickoff team on the field as they'll send this one away. From inside his own 10, let's see what he gets. Good job by the coverage unit to put a stop to that return. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. They'll keep it on the ground to keep this clock moving. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Defense uses a timeout quickly, trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. Didn't get much done on that first play of the drive. It's second and 11. Trying play action. And he can't find anyone open, and down he goes. A sack here late in the fourth. And the defense.
defense gets him on the ground for the fourth time today, by the way. They've pressured him. He's still done an unbelievable job making completions. But you know what? Get him on the ground when he's got the ball. He can't make something happen. Keep hitting him. Keep getting him on the ground. Timeout called there by the defense. Desperate to get the ball back and save as much time as possible. The Aggies send out the punt team to kick it away. Three and out and not much choice but to get rid of the ball. Sometimes avoiding disaster is the best thing. The punter just gets it out of there. Really nice job all the way around. Got a few blocks, made a couple of moves, and a good return on that one before he's pushed out of bounds. To the air on first down. Can't find his man as he took a shot trying to deliver that football, and it'll be second down. This really has been a master class by the quarterback with decision-making, right? We've already seen him throw multiple touchdown passes in the game. He's understood when to take his shots and when to throw it away when things aren't there, like on that last play. To the air, it's Sellers. Pulls it in. And that defense doesn't allow a cutback, and they get him out of bounds after a short game. Guys out of the backfield now, it's not just run the ball downhill anymore. You gotta be versatile. I gotta be able to trust you in the pass game, and I gotta be able to throw you the football, and you can do that right there. I know you're gonna catch it, and I can depend on you. It's a makeable field goal from the 29-yard line. Let's see how aggressive they are on third and long. A shot toward the end zone. Touchdown, South Carolina! And they take it in for six more points. And great execution. That is how it's done late in the football game. Now, all you need is that extra point. Bring the kicker out there. This is what you do, just like practice. Knock it through the uprights, tie this football game, and you might be looking at overtime soon. And now a critical extra point attempt here. And he needs this one for the tie. And he's got it. We're locked up in the fourth. Quick strike offense on that three-play scoring drive. And they've got it locked up in the final minute after the touchdown and extra point. After that latest answer, tie things up. Just about set to kick it away again. On the run from inside his own five. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. Texas A&M has it back on the offense, ready to go to work. The short hands, it's Daniels. And he goes out of bounds after a nice pickup on that one. Yeah, and you see running backs in today's football, they play a wide receiver basically for you, but you got to find a guy that you can throw it to, and you know he's going to catch the ball consistently. All knotted up and just a little bit of time left in regulation. Dropping back, it's Wegman. Nice defensive play to get a hand in there and knock it away. Well, the defense finally showing some life there. It's been tough tonight, too, because this offense has been lighting them up through the air, but a nice individual effort that time, forcing the incompletion. Fairly manageable distance here on third down from the 27. From the shotgun, the inside give. And the defense knew exactly where that first down line was, and they stopped him short. Texas A&M will have to boot it away. Looking for a block, it's McDowell. The solid return there offsets some of the punt yardage and really sets up this offense nicely. Well guys, let's play some more, headed to overtime. And this just feels right. Both of these teams going back and forth. So of course, David, this thing needs to get decided in OT. Let's see who's better. Short amount of time to do it. A couple possessions probably, maybe one possession each. Who's the better team? 
All right, guys, so here we go in overtime, and just to refresh everyone's memory, alternating possession starting on the opponent's 25. And you want to play defense first because you want to know what you need. That's a key philosophical approach for most teams when it comes to overtime, David. Yeah, and remember the rule change a couple years ago, too, in, in the second overtime and two-point conversion. So all this stuff is situational-type football that you better have worked on throughout these weeks of the season. They'll come out on this drive and let it rip. Throws to the tight end. He caught it. Touchdown, Texas A&M. And they score first here in overtime. Man, you talk about striking first and creating some momentum in overtime. The first play, you take it to the house and you flip the whole game and put all the pressure on the other sideline. Palmer, that's how you start an OT. Yeah, and David, that's just 11 guys on offense locked in. First play, score a touchdown, put all the pressure on your opponent. They understand what it's going to take to win this football game. The all-important extra point would push this lead to seven. And the extra point is true, and they're on top by seven. They know what's in front of them. They have to answer that score with a touchdown. Looking to go up top on first down. Snagged in the middle. It's Sanders. They make the stop right there. Good pickup. It's still short of the first down. The Gamecocks have pushed it inside the 20. Out of the shotgun, they go to the ground. Didn't get much done on that line. He'll fight his way out and maybe, maybe pick up a yard. It's hard to run on a defense that comes off the ball like that and runs to the football like that. Good luck. No holes anyway. Third down, and they need a touchdown to stay in the game. Wide receiver now comes in motion. Using his feet. And he's tripped up, but not before picking up the first down. QBs that can run completely change your game. I mean, every single bit. You have to understand, now as a pass rusher, I got to keep him in the pocket. I got to understand all the zone read concepts and the power read and the jet read, all the different things they can do to you. So, you know, having a guy back there at the helm that can run the football, you better be alert. Touchdown, Gamecock! They got it in, and now an extra point away from the tie. Obviously very hard to complete passes this area of the field. Nice execution, now you're down by one, and now you got to make the decision. Are we going to go for it and try to end the game right here and put this game in our offense's hands? What do you think? And that's why I love having the ball second, because I get the opportunity to do this. I knew they scored a touchdown. We scored a touchdown. Now, do I want to go for the win, or do I want to continue this game on? It's so nice to have the ball second. Don't assume on this extra point. They needed to send it to a second OT. And the extra point was good. One extra period didn't get it done, and we start the second OT. They'll start this drive with a pass. Looking to the big tight end. A connection. Touchdown, Gamecocks! Got it in to take the lead here in the second OT. If this dude were a kitchen knife, you would be slicing tomatoes so thin your in-laws would never come back to your house. Well, that'd be a good thing. I don't know if I want my in-laws to come back anyways, but he's been on fire. He's been absolutely torching his defense. They've had absolutely no answers for him. Now in the second overtime, you must go for the two-point conversion. 
trying to barge in. They can't convert, and the lead remains at six, and now they'll have to go on defense. Now on first down, they need to answer with a touchdown. Back to pass, it's Wegman. Fires left. Oh, and it's intercepted, a turnover in overtime. Takes it the other way. And that will put a stamp on it. A game-deciding play as they seal it with a pick. 